I'm Lau. Uh, I'm currently working as an associate professor at University of Technology Malaysia. Thank you, Dr. Sukra, for the uh, impressive interaction to, uh, to me. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for participating in this uh, webinar on material science, engineering, and technology. And the title of my presentation today is Tim Fern Now Composite Membrane for Water uh, Desalination Process. In the next 30 minutes or so, uh, some of the topics that I will cover is an uh, overview of a Tim Fern Composite Membrane, uh, TFC Membrane, and uh, the history of the Tim Fern Nano Composite Membrane and some of the structure or morphology of this kind of membrane. And I will also highlight uh, some of our recent research findings about the strategy that we use to fabricate the thin front nanocomposite membrane for water desalinations. Before I proceed further to my technical presentation, perhaps uh, there's uh, just briefly introduce you about my university. UTN is one of the uh, five research universities in Malaysia, and uh, the campus, main campus is located at the southern part of the uh, peninsula of Malaysia, which is very close to Singapore. It started as a technical school in uh, 1904 before it was uh, upgraded to university in 1975. Now, uh, currently, we have uh, 1,400 uh, lecturers with uh, PhD qualification, and we have about close to 30,000 students studying master and undergraduate program in the campus. And the latest uh, QS World University ranking, UTM uh, is positioned at 187, which is the best ever position we have seen the report was published. So this is, the, uh, let's start with our the technical presentation today. So if you are working on the membrane filtration process, I'm quite sure most of you are familiar with this uh, filtration spectrum for pressure driven uh, membrane process. So if you look at this spectrum, the membrane with a smaller pore size is a microfiltration membrane, while the membrane with the smallest pore size is the reverse osmosis membrane. And uh, generally, if you are talking about a TFC membrane, this kind of membrane is only used for nano filtration and reverse osmosis process. This is mainly because TFC and membrane is able to remove non-valent and monovalent salt with a very reasonable high water permeability. When you look at the structure of the TFC membrane, it's basically composed of three main layers. The top uh, polyamide layer, normally just a few hundred of the nanometers supported by uh, microporous uh, membranes. And on the bottom part, you have a uh, non-woven fabric, which is normally to ensure that the membrane have a good mechanical strength when you use it at high operating pressures. So if you look at the entire membrane structure, the most important part of the membrane is the polyamide layer, because this is the layer will govern the salt rejection as well as the fouling behavior of the membrane. So how you are going to fabricate this uh, very thin layer of the membrane is mainly because uh, researchers will use two different monomers to cross in each other, and then you will get a very uh, thin uh, polyamide on top of the substrates. Polyamide, uh, this kind of technique, we normally call it as an interfacial polymerization. This technique actually was invented by uh, Dr. Morgans in 1959. And this is an original photograph uh, taken by Dr. Morgans a uh, long, long time ago. And what he demonstrated here is when you have a two monomer, monomer A and monomer B at different phases, and when these two monomers meet with each other at the interface, they are able to form a very uh, thin polyamide. And as long as you have a polyamide, it will continue to form until one stage, then it will stop. So what is the most unique uh, feature of this poly interfacial polymerization is it can happen at, even at the room temperature. I believe you see there are so many polymerization process, they are either need high temperature or pressure or what, but interfacial polymerization is just happens at room temperatures. So Dr. Morgan is just uh, the inventor of uh, interfacial polymerization technique. He didn't demonstrate the technique on the membrane uh, process. He was the researcher from uh, USA with uh, Kedodi and his colleagues demonstrated that when you use the interfacial polymerization, you are able to form a layer on top of the microporous. 
and eventually uh, you are able to form a membrane which have a much better flux compared to asymmetric membranes. So because of this uh, uh, research, eventually they able to commercialize the first uh, reverse osmosis membrane, TFC reverse osmosis membrane in the 1970s, and then uh, TFC nanofacial membrane in the 1980s. So this is uh, actually considered a breakthrough compared to the first uh, asymmetric membrane invented by Lloyd and Solidogen in the 1950s. As I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, when you want to fabricate the polyamide layers on the surface, you have you need to have a two monomer, but because the polyamide layer will only take place on the substrate. You need to form a layer which is have very good property and defect free. So what you can do here is, after you pour the first monomer on the substrate, you need to use a rubber roller to remove the excess aqueous solution. This is to make sure that the polyamide layer you make can, can have a good property without any air bubble trap within the uh, polyamide layers. Uh, so far, all the information or presented is about the thin film composite membrane. So in 2007, a research group from uh, USA, they demonstrated or they invented a new technique called the thin film normal composite membrane technique to fabricate new type of membrane that can have much better performance compared to the conventional TFC membrane. In this uh, report, the researcher reported that when you embed that small amount of the nanofillers within the polyamide layers, you can get much higher water flux on the resultant membranes without having any uh, drop in the salt rejection. Besides this, they also find that the membrane surface properties such as charge, allophysicity will improve upon incorporation of the nanoparticles. So in this case, the nano in this thin film nanocomposite membrane is actually referred to the nanomaterials, inorganic nanomaterials. So there are several uh, important milestones throughout the years since the first uh, TFM membrane was reported. In 2006, before one year before the first technical paper was published, the researcher actually uh, found a pattern with uh, United States in the United States. And then in 2010, uh, there's a first pilot installation of the TFA membrane uh, conducted. And 2011, the first commercial TFA membranes was launched by the nano h 2 companies. 2018, we can see that there are more than 150 university or institute in 60 countries work on the TFA membranes. And uh, recently, I go to the Google and the studies show that as of the 30th October 2020, there are more than 500 articles related to thin film nanocomposite membrane. And from this graph, you can see that uh, for the past five years, there's a sharp increase in the numbers of the papers. And uh, this is a morphology of the dif different types of the thin film nanocomposite membranes. The first type of thin film nanocomposite membrane is you embed the nanomaterial during interfacial polymerization process, where you can introduce the nanoparticle either in the aqueous solution or organic solution. So eventually you will get the nanoparticle trapped within the polyamide layers. In the second cases, you can deposit the nanoparticle on top of the surface of the uh, polyamide layers. So that means uh, your polyamide still remain unattached. You just deposit on its surface with the nanoparticles. In the third morphology, you deposit a poly nanoparticle layer on the bottom of the polyamide layers. That means it's considered something like sandwich. You sandwich a layer between polyamide layer and the uh, substrate. So this kind of uh, morphology actually we have uh, published uh, a review recently to review different kind of that fabrication technique and the impact of a uh, nanofilter in journal chemical engineering research and design. So each of the technique actually has its pros and cons. But generally, if you look at this slide, uh, some of the challenge are accumulation of nanoparticles that affect the polyamide integrity. 
So this is a TM image at uh, 200 and I think 500 nanometer scale. Some of the particles actually they are accumulated on within the polyamide layers. So we, which is very difficult for you to control when you introduce it in the during the polymerization process. The second challenges challenge is the loss of the nanomaterial during interfacial polymerization process, uh, especially for the researcher who introduced a nanomaterial in the aqueous solution. The third is a poor dispersion of nanoparticles because most of the particles we use are their hylophilic in nature. So if you disperse the hylophilic nanoparticle in the organic solvents, what you can get is uh, they, are, they are having a poor dispersion, which is like in this case, you display in the solution, they will just settle down very quickly, which is we are made very difficult for you to use it for the membrane fabrication. The last one, also the most important one, is, is actually the stability issue of the membrane. Uh, we have uh, many cases, researchers reported very good uh, result of the TFM membrane, but we are really not sure like, if you proceed a long, longer term, what will happen to this uh, particle? Will they reach out? And eventually affect the membrane performance. Yeah, this is a thing that uh, very critical if you want to make the membrane uh, to be a uh, more much more practical. In uh, 2018, our group actually invented a new technique to deposit the nano particle. In this case, the nano graphene oxide within the uh, polyamide layers. And you can see here we are able to reduce accumulation and the graphene oxide is just uh, nicely embedded within the polyamide layers. And this technique is actually called as a vacuum filtration technique. And our results show that when you put in the nanoparticles or graphene oxide in the polyamide layer, they have a good anti-fouling properties. The flux is also much better. And also the halophysicity of the membrane yeah, improves significantly. But uh, when we Publish this article, we also realized one, one issue, which is the this technique vacuum filtration that is very difficult for the industry to scale up, mainly because of the limitation or size of the commercial vacuum uh, uh, instruments. So what so in order to solve this uh, problems, our group recently uh, we studied another physic uh, more practical method to introduce a graphene oxide on the membranes. So in this case, uh, we investigate two different orientation. The first orientation is we have a graphene oxide uh, with, together with a PVA solution, we coat on top of the polyamide layers. In the second orientation, we also have a same solution. Instead of coating on the top of the polyamide layer, we coat on the top of the substrate before we form a polyamide layer. We just want to see uh, which one is a more practical to produce a membrane. But of course, when you talk about the industrial practicalities, a coating actually is a very simple technique. And I mean, in terms of like how to commercialize it, it's much more easier compared to like other technique, which always give you good performance, but somehow upscaling is, is very challenging. And this article, for those who are more uh, interested on our work, maybe they can refer to this uh, uh, our paper, which recently published in the Destinations. So we, this is an illustration of our membranes. We have a orientation one, as I mentioned before, uh, where we put the coating layer on top of the polyamide layers. And we have an orientation two, where we put the uh, coating layer on the bottom of the polyamide layers. So orientation one, we also make a control where there's a coating layer, but without graphene oxide. And uh, orientation one on the left hand side, left, right hand side, this is a coating layer with a graphene oxide. Orientation two, again, we have a control without uh, graphene oxide and with a graphene oxide. On top of this, we also have one more orientation called uh, orientation two OD. OD here refer to oven driving. If you still uh, remember what I mentioned just now, uh, during the conventional interfacial primarization process, you need to use a rubber to remove the excess aqua solution from the surface. So this oven driving is to prevent using rubber roller to remove the aqua solution because our concern is if you use it, you may we may lose a lot of nanomaterials uh, from the surface. 
on the bottom part of this slide uh, refer to the property of graphene oxide we use it actually it's a very standard graphene oxide normally reported by the researcher we just want to show the people uh, the property are confirmed before we use it for uh, TFM uh, membrane fabrications so we study the impact for loading from zero until 0 0.2 uh, weight percent and uh, the effect of the orientation also we study so there's a lot of data here the first graph is about the pure water flux of the membrane the second is a salt rejection this salt actually refer to NaCO so what I already made it simple and I put some of the important notes here the first note is our TFM membranes always has a higher flux compared to the cell synthesized TFC and commercial membranes. Our cell synthesized TFC membrane having, is having a similar flux like the commercial TFC membrane. Where you can refer to this part uh, means there's no any nanoparticle, zero loading. And the flux of the membrane increase when you increase a, a graphene oxide in the membrane from zero until 0 0.015 and before it uh, go down, mainly because when you have too many graphene oxide, it's actually uh, very difficult to uh, control the formation of the polyamide layer. So in general, we see the patterns. Membrane map of orientation 2 has a higher flux, followed by membrane map of orientation 2OD, and the membrane with the lower flux is uh, orientation 1. Even those orientation 2 membrane has a higher flux, if you look at the salt rejection, it actually has a very low, uh, it actually has the lowest NACL rejection. This is mainly because uh, for this orientation, orientation to membrane, we have to use a rubber roller to remove excess solution. And because of this reason, most of the graphene oxide will be uh, removed during the process. And this eventually will interrupt the polyamide cross linking. And if you go further, some people may say like the rejection of membrane is look very similar because they are all about 95%. But you, if you look at the another side, which is you convert the salt rejection to the salt pass, pass, passage, you will realize that the membrane performance for TFMA is actually much better. Uh, when the salt passage is low, it means that you can produce much better uh, permit quality, I mean water quality. So in this case, if you really compare orientation one membrane with a commercial SW30 SLE membrane, the water quality you produce actually is about 40% better. But in terms of rejection here, you don't really see very much difference because they are just uh, maybe one to 2% difference only. So and here, because orientation two is always is not good. So what we are trying to do further is we want to study the structure of the TFA membrane map of orientation 2OD and orientation 1. This is the image showing that when you use a roller, some of the solution will remove together. So this is particularly uh, becomes a main concern when you make the membrane with uh, graphene oxide insert in between the polyamide layer and the substrate. You can see here there's a droplet and this droplet when you zoom in you can see there are particles graphene oxide. So it means that during this process, uh, graphene oxide are removed, even though you have uh, some graphene oxide, but the, the occlumation most likely will happen and you'll have some loss of the graphene oxide during this process. There's a reason why graph orientation tool is not suitable to make the TFM membranes. And uh, we also characterize the membrane with respect to a TM at the high resolution uh, magnification. And orientation one, you can see the graphene oxide actually appear on the top of the polyamide layers. And orientation two OD, uh, graphene oxide actually uh, sandwiched between polyamide layer and the substrate. And we have a surface a morphology of two different uh, membranes. We can see that both of them, you were able to detect the graphene oxide. But the issue, some people may question like, the particles still accumulate in this case. Yeah. But you, if you look further, the coating layer actually take place. It's not exactly the same like the polyamide layer. Polyamide layer was synthesized separately. There's a reason why, even though you have a small accumulation of the nano 
particle on the surface, it will not really affect the polyamide layer properties. This actually can be uh, confirmed by the high rejection of NaCl, uh, as I showed in the previous slide. So in terms of the surface roundness, we can see that for both orientation, orientation one and orientation two OD, whenever you have a graphene oxide, the surface roughness of the membrane actually is become very rough. And this is mainly because of several reasons, because when you introduce a graphene oxide, they are actually inorganic. And also the structure of the graphene oxide actually is a ring, ring grid. So there's a reason why when you put it inside, the roughness will increase accordingly. In terms of the halophilicity, where we normally measure it uh, with respect to the content angle, uh, also I already have put some important notes here. The TFA membrane with a geo always have a lower contact angles compared to the TFC membrane without any geo. This means that it shows that uh, the halophilicity of the TFA membrane is better. When you compare between orientation one membrane and orientation two membrane, always orientation one membrane has a better uh, halophilicity, which means lower contact angle. This is the reason because orientation one, the graphene oxide actually appear on the top of the surface. It have, have a maximum uh, feature to, to draw the water compared to the orientation two membrane where the graphene oxide uh, was embedded within uh, on the bottom of the polyamide leaf. And we go further in terms of the anti-fouling property. Orientation one membranes is the best uh, membrane in terms of the water flux recovery rate. Normally we call it a FRR. And uh, in this case, we test all the membranes for a different foulum, PSA and uh, NA sodium alginate for up to five hours. And then we do the comparison, we rinse the membrane, we measure again the pure water flux. And orientation one membrane, in fact, after five hours, you are able to recover almost 100% of the pure water flux compared to other membrane uh, where you get uh, 90 or even less than 90% of the flux recovery. This is only uh, happens after five hours. If you pause it longer, we believe that our membrane TFA membrane, is still better compared to the TFC membrane. So if you look at the structure of the orientation one membrane, the graphene oxide actually uh, appear on the surface. It means that whenever phallon will uh, deposit on the surface of the graphene oxide, immediately this halophilic surface, they will prevent or minimize the deposit or absorption of the phallon onto the membrane surface. And uh, there's a one, one slide I mentioned, the stability is very important. So we do uh, further characterization in terms of the membrane stability. We follow uh, the method reported in uh, one uh, journal, one paper published in Journal of Membrane Science. We cut the membrane in small, small pieces and we put the membrane sample in a 50 ml uh, hour water and we subject the solution to uh, 200 RPN for a period of four days and every day we change the water. And we, when we measure the leaching, you, if you see here day one, day two, there's a leaching, but it's getting less after uh, day one. And day three and day four, basically we don't detect any leaching. So in this case, more slightly to us is leaching is still possible because uh, graphene oxide is actually uh, not uh, polymer. They could be like low uh, compatibility with uh, polyamide layer. But if you look at the number here, this is a 10 power of negative four. The leaching actually is very, very minimum. Uh, we believe that with the use of the PVA as a uh, adhesion layer, we are able to really uh, measure only minimum graphene oxide will leach out from the polyamide layers. So uh, at the end, as a conclusion, we find that our TFA membrane, whether it's an orientation made of orientation one or orientation two, they always have a better water flux compared to the commercial membranes. Uh, this is uh, mainly because we introduce a graphene oxide, which is a hydrophilic uh, material to, to improve the wettability of the membranes. So for the orientation one, where the graphene oxide appear on the surface, the flux can be improved uh, by 50% compared to the 
uh, commercial membrane. And anti fouling is uh, very perfect. It's, we can almost uh, obtain 100% FRR. And in terms of the rejections, also slightly better compared to the commercial membrane. So for the orientation two, even though the flux is much higher compared to orientation one, if you look further the data, half hour data and the rejection data, you realize that the orientation two membrane is not as good as orientation one membrane. It's mainly because when you insert the graphene oxide on top of the substrate, it's actually made the polyamide layer uh, having defects. So this minor defect eventually will reduce the rejection of the uh, NACO, or those increase of flux. So at the end of the uh, finding, we conclude that orientation one is the best membrane. I mean, if you want to use a membrane for the reverse osmosis seawater desalination process. So uh, with this, I would like to end my presentations and I hope you enjoy my presentation today. And if you want to get in touch with me further, you can uh, send me an email. And this is my email address here. And uh, thank you very much.